Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Ghost Ahoy quest. So, for this quest, you need to have the following requirements. So, you need to complete the Priest in Peril quest and the Restless Ghost quest. Um, and as for skill requirements, you need 25 agility. Uh, boosts are allowed though, uh, and you also need level 20 cooking, and you must be able to kill a level 60 giant lobster. So, that's pretty easy, really. Um, that's it for requirements. On to the items. So, you need the Amulet of Ghost Speak. Um, you'll need a quite a fair few coins. In your money pouch um, because to speed up this quest uh, we will be teleporting to and from Port Serim a fair bit to use the charter ship to go to the main area and it saves time having to acquire these things called ecto tokens which I'll explain a bit further on but just make sure you've got a fair few coins in your money pouch um, you will also need a bucket uh, you also need milky nettle tea which can be made prior to the quest um, but I will tell you just uh, what items to bring with you and then I can show you how to make it during it. Um, it's it, The items you need are a bowl of water, uh, nettles, which are what you require, and a bucket of milk. The nettles, however, require gloves in order to pick them without getting hurt, and these are just normal sort of standard gloves, so either like uh, uh, bronze, iron gloves, anything like that. It's only certain gloves that don't work, so... Uh, as for other items, you will need some thread, uh, you will also need silk, uh, you need three colours of dye, and I would have three each of the primary colours, so basically you need three red dyes, three yellow dyes, and three blue dyes, which you can buy from the Grand Exchange quite easily, so uh, again, this will make a bit more sense to you later on in the quest. Uh, you will need a spade in your inventory, because the tool belt one doesn't work, and you also need an oak shield bow. Just play this clip back just to make sure you have got all the items just to save you going back and forth to like the Grand Exchange in the bank later on so it doesn't hold you up too much. But yeah, that's it for the requirements and items. Now onto the quest starting point. So we're currently at the Port Serim Lodestone, which can be accessed via the Lodestone network. Now, I definitely recommend having Port Lodestone, uh, sorry, Port Serim Lodestone and the Canifist Lodestone activated uh, for this quest, because it's going to save you a lot of time and effort. Um, but really, having full access to the Lodestone network uh, makes speeding up quests a lot easier. So if you need a guide for that, I've got one in the description below. Um, but from here, we're going to go get the Charter Ship, which is the very southern ship of the Port Serim Dock. I Leave, and then you want to charter a ship to Port Fatimatus and then from there we're going to head to the quest starting point um, which is by speaking to Valerina who is in the northernmost house so uh, I'll speak to you once we arrive there just watch where I'm going once you arrive in the house make sure you've got the ghost speak amulet equipped otherwise you won't understand her and you want to speak to Valerina and she'll go through some dialogue with you so basically, all the ghosts in Port Fasimatis are not able to pass on the other side due to a evil um, ghost called Necrovarus, um, and basically she wants you to try and convince him to set them free. So after you finish going through all the dialogue, we need to go speak to Necrovarus, um, who is in the Ectofuntus, just outside the town through the barrier. Now, at this barrier, you're able to pass through it, um, so coming out of the port area, but you're not able to go back in unless you have these Ecto tokens. Now, you can acquire Ecto tokens, but it does take a little while to do. So what I would recommend, every time you need to go back into the actual port area, just teleport to the port to Lodestone and get a charter ship. I know it sounds like you're spending a lot of coins, but trust me, you spend a lot more time I'm getting the ecto token so I definitely go with that um, anyway go for the barrier and you should see Necrovarus at the ecto funtus um, talk to him and unfortunately he'll be less cooperative and even gets rather irritated with your involvement um, so once he's basically refused you need to go speak to Valerina again so as I said instead of like, getting all the ecto tokens you need just teleport to Port Serim get a charter ship back to this area and then go to the Valerina's house similar to what we did at the beginning so he speak to her and she'll mention that a woman that was a disciple to Necrovarus uh, knew about his darkest secrets uh, and she fled before Necrovarus took over and she wants you to locate her and ask her for her help. So we're now going to teleport to the Canifist Lodestone using the Lodestone network so just do that now. And then once you arrive at the Lodestone, just over this direction here, you should see some of the nettles I was talking about earlier on. Um, what you want to do is pick some nettles, make sure you've got gloves equipped though, otherwise you'll get damaged um, and you won't be able to pick them. If for some reason you've got the wrong type of gloves with you, in the Canifist town, you'll be able to trade the clothes person, I believe, and he trades gloves, and I think those gloves will work for picking nettles, so uh, don't panic too much if it's not letting you with the currently equipped gloves you've got. Um, but then what you want to do is 
is put the nettles in the bowl of water uh, and then you want to light the logs on fire so just cut a tree to get some logs and then right click uh, the nettle water to use on the fire um, and that will turn it into some nettle tea but that's what you want to do for the moment and then with the tea you want to head northwest of uh, the Canifus Lodestone uh, to the east side of the Slayer Tower and there's a small house there and inside you want to talk to the old crone and ask her about Necrovirus and she'll tell you how she wants some nettle tea to refresh her aged memory um, so you should have that in your inventory talk to the crone again offering her tea but she'll only drink it in a special cup so she gives you a cup to ha um, hand it over you want to use the nettle tea make sure you do right click again so you don't accidentally drink it use the nettle, key, uh, nettle tea sorry, on the cup and then use your bucket of milk um, on it and then you want to give her back the tea filled cup to refresh her memory so talk to her again and she'll go through a way in, the, in which you can control Necrovirus and command him to do whatever you want and she'll be needing three items in order for you to be able to do this, um, which is the Book of Harakanto, the Robes of Necrovirus and a Translation Manual. Uh, once you've been told about the three items for enchanting, don't leave and talk to her again to start on finding the book. So speak to her and ask if there's anything you can do for her since she's been so helpful to you and she'll mention that her long lost son um, about being disappeared and gives you a model ship that belonged to him. Uh, you want to use your silk on the model ship to fix the flag mast and then you want to head to the broken down ship which is just north of the farm near the Ectophantus temple. Um, so if you keep heading like east from here you should eventually get to that area and you'll notice there's like a destroyed ship on the shore and this is where we need to go. So you want to walk onto the ship and climb up a couple of ladders to get to the top deck. Um, the second ladder is next to the cabin, just in case you can't uh, spot it. And you need to wait for the wind speed to die down a bit and then search the mast to find out what colours it's made of so you can recolour your model ship in the correct way. Now there are three mast sections um, and you may have to search the mast multiple times before you learn the colour of each bit and the colours are random for each player. Um, so what, the reason I ask you to bring three of each dies is um, there can be many possible colours um, you could have green purple and orange which would require you to use like, all your dies up so um, by having three of each dies you should be able to do the correct colours so like I said, every time you search the mask, it should tell you what um, part of the flag is a certain colour. And like I said, it's different for each um, player. So for me, I believe it said the top half was orange. So obviously I had to use a red and a yellow dye together and use uh, and then use the orange dye on the ship. And then it asks you what section to a colour in. So obviously pick the relevant one. Um, the bottom half of my flag was purple. So again, I used a red and blue dye together to get a purple one and then coloured the relevant part on the model ship. And then finally the skull emblem was coloured yellow so I could just use the yellow dye on that and that was all three parts of the ship coloured so make sure you take the time with it you don't want to mess it up otherwise you're going to have to reacquire another model ship and reacquire the dye so you can't really go wrong though as long as you're paying attention to what parts are what. So after dyeing the model ship correctly, climb down a level and speak with the old man and show him the toy boat and he'll recognise it. That's the old crone's son and you, when you return him his ship he'll give you a chest key and you want to then enter the captain's quarters and use the key on the chest inside to receive a piece of map. So now you want to proceed to the northwest part of the ship's deck and there's a gangplank you can walk out onto to get to some rocks and then you need to jump along the path of rocks and this is what you need 25 agility for. Um, it is possible to fail the jumps which will cause you to lose a fair bit of life points so obviously just make sure you've got some food with you. Um, but after keep jumping across all the rocks you'll find a closed chest at the other end and you um, search it to receive another map piece. Then you want to return to the ship and climb down the lowest level of the wrecked ship and open up and search each one of the chests. Eventually a giant lobster will jump out and attack you, uh, kill it, and once you've finished defeating it, take the last piece of the map from the chest and now you can fit all the map scraps together to form a treasure map. Um, and now you want to head back to Port Fasimatus, so again, teleport to Port Serene Lodestone, then get the charter ship to Port Fasimatus and I'll speak to you again there. So, once you're back at the Fort Pathos of I can't even speak now, um, back at the docks, you want to go and find the ghost captain who um, is right near a little rowing boat and talk to him to travel to the Dragontooth, uh, Dragontooth Island. Uh, you must have the map and spade in your inventory, otherwise you won't be able to find the book. So once on the island, you're meant to use the map to find where the treasure is by following the instructions, but I'm basically just going to go straight to the spot where it is um, and um, dig the option and you guys know where to stand. So you don't have to follow the directions uh, properly to be able to get the book. Just go to this spot and use the dig option after the reading the map and you should obtain the book with no problems at all. Saves a little bit of time. 
So you'll now have the Book of Haran Kanto, so that's one item down. Uh, you will then want to have the Ghost Cats and take you back to Port uh, Fasimatus. Uh, once you're back on the docks, you want to go speak to a man called Ak Haranu, which is a human wandering around, uh, wandering around the docks, and he'll tell you that he has the manual that you require, but he'll barter it for the famous Robin signature on an oak shield bow. So you want to head inside the inn, which is in town, and find Robin. Uh, and once you speak to Robin, he'll challenge you to a game of rune draw. Uh, the game's very similar to Blackjack. Players take turns drawing runes from a bag of 10 runes. Each rune has a different point value. Um, if you choose the hold option, you won't draw any more runes. Uh, the player with the most points wins the game. However, if you draw a death rune, results in an automatic loss. Uh, and there's a larger chance that you will draw a death rune than Robin. So a bet of 25 coins is placed every game and you must win 4 hands enough so that Robin owes you 100 coins. Uh, losing hands does not affect the count towards 100 so you only need to win 4 even if you lose a few. So basically Robin will keep refusing to pay you the, um, the coins he owes you and then once he gets to 100 coins total that he owes you, you're threatened to tell the ghost of what he's doing unless he signs the Oak Shield bow for you. So basically, you know, you don't even have to um, play that game properly, you can just keep pressing draw all the time and eventually you will uh, end up having four wins automatically. So, But some of you will catch on how to win the game and it's pretty easy, all you've got to do is try and trick Robin into drawing a death room basically. So, uh, But once he signs your shield bow, take it back to Ak Haranu and he'll give you the translation manual. So now um, to acquire the final thing which is the robes, you want to speak to the innkeeper and ask if he has any jobs for you and he'll give you a bed sheet that he wants you to take to Robin, but rather than doing that you want to take it with you. So, we need to go grab a bucket of slime, which can be found at the very bottom of the Necro uh, the Ectophunter's temple. So, go through the barrier and go through the trapdoor, and then you want to follow the path all the way down till you reach the very bottom of the temple, and then use your bucket on the slime pole to obtain a bucket of slime. Now don't use it on the bed sheet just yet, because if you do that you won't be able to get a charter ship, so what you want to do for the moment, don't slime cover it, just go back to the Port Serum Lodestone and charter the ship to Port Fasimatus, and then once you're back in there, then use your um, pool of slime on the bed sheet uh, in order to uh, turn it into a green colour. So once you're back in Port Fasimatus and you've got the uh, slime covered bed sheets, you want to go uh, talk to Gravingus, who is the ghost activist protesting against Necroverus, and he's westered in in the sort of northwest part of the town. He'll give you a petition form to collect signatures from the townspeople, uh, put your bed sheet on, and um, go speak to each of the ghosts, uh, ghosts to acquire 10 signatures from them. Um, it's not too hard, as long as you don't talk to the same person twice in a row, you can ask the same two or three ghosts for all 10 signatures. If any ask for exo tokens or any other form of money just ignore them and speak to another one and basically just keep going around in a loop and eventually you will obtain 10 signatures for no cost at all uh, once you've got all 10 signatures talk to Gravingus again who will ask you to go to Necroverus and present him with the petition form so pass through the barrier and speak to Necroverus and he'll get really angry over the petition and burn it but will drop a bone key in the process you want to pick that up and head upstairs and you'll see there's a locked door in the uh, area you're at um, and use the bone key on the door to get inside uh, and then you want to open and search the coffin to find the mystical robes that belong to him. Uh, so now we have all three items, we want to return to the old crime, so with the robes, the book and the manual and your amulet of ghost speak. So quickest way again, teleport to Canifis Lodestone and then head north uh, west in order to reach her. So, uh, once you hand over the items to her, she'll cast a spell on your amulet and you'll now have an enchanted ghost speak amulet and now you want to return to the Ectophantus to, st uh, to talk to Necrovarus. And with your new enchanted ghost speak amulet, you can command him to release all the ghosts he's holding. Um, for a joke, you can also ask him to tell a joke or do a, dis uh, or do a chicken impression, and it won't discharge your amulet, but it's quite funny to watch. Um, but either way, to be able to complete the quest properly, you need to command him to release all the ghosts, which you'll have no choice but to agree to. And then now you can enter Port Fasimatus, but this time we won't have to get the charter ship because now he's under our control. We can pass through the barrier for free without needing any Ecto tokens, that's one bonus. And then you want to go speak to Valerina to tell her the good news and to finish the quest. 
So after you finish speaking to her, it'll come up with congratulations, you completed the Ghost Ahoy quest, you're awarded two quest points, 2,400 prayer experience, uh, free passage into Port Fasim Matters via the barrier. Uh, you'll also be given an Ecto Vial, which allows you to do a one-click teleport to the Ecto Funtus. Um, although you can only possess one at a time, if you lose it, you can reclaim one from her for free. Uh, you'll also get two Treasure Hunter Keys and two Hearts of Ice. So yeah, cool. bit of a long quest. Uh, obviously, there is a fair bit of travelling, but trust me, um, doing the teleport to Port Storm and using the charter ship back into uh, Port Fast Matters is a lot easier than going into the trouble of acquiring the Ecto tokens. And although it might cost you a few coins, it really is worth it for the time you're saving. Um, but overall, not too bad of a quest to complete. Uh, a fair bit of prior experience as a reward, which is good. And also, the Ecto Vial is very handy, um, as are quite a lot of other quests involved. Um, this area um, of Canifis and Port Fasimata so having the Ecto Vial in your inventory will really speed up completing those quests as well and very handy as a one click emergency teleport when fighting bosses or other players etc etc um, but yeah Overall, I don't think you'll get stuck uh, following this guide, however, if you do run into any problems at all, uh, I think the only problems you might run into is if you don't quite get the flag bit, but again, you can ask me in the comment section below for help, and I'll obviously help you out as best I can. If not, thank you for watching, please make sure you like, favourite, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share with your friends. Cheers guys, bye bye.